when you establish mindfulness, you're doing two things at once. One is you're looking at the body in and of itself, which includes, of course, looking at the breath in and of itself. And you're putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. For right now, you're not taking on any issues with regard to the world at all. No matter how much the thoughts inside the mind say, you've got to think about this, you've got to think about that, you can think about those things at other times. What you've got to do right now is establish a good foundation here. That means getting your priorities straight. Reminding yourself that the shape of your mind is the most important thing you've got to look after in life. Because it's from the mind that we have intentions and from the intentions that we do actions. And it's the actions then create results that come back to us. So go back to the source, go back to the mind. Focus it here on the breath as a way of keeping it in the present moment. And as for any other thoughts that may come up right now, you have to regard them as false friends. As the Buddha said, we go around with craving as our companion, and we trust it implicitly. Whatever it wants, we decide we want. And it's got us so thoroughly indoctrinated that the idea of doing without it just seems impossible. But what the Buddha wants you to do is step out for a bit and see the extent to which your cravings actually cause suffering, and so you can realize they're false friends. Ones who make friends only to cheat them, good only in word, flatter and control. Your companions and ruinous fun, and that's what that describes craving right there. So you've got to learn how to step outside and not follow your cravings all the time. This is why the Buddha emphasized that principle of practicing the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. Because all too often we practice the Dharma in accordance with our likes and dislikes. If we like a certain idea, or we feel like meditating, then we'll meditate. If we like a certain idea, then we'll go along with it. If things we don't like, well, we step back a bit. And as a result, we don't get the full benefit from the Dharma. Because you look at your doubts about the Dharma, and they come down to areas where you really don't know. And so, as the Buddha recommends, take as a working hypothesis the things that actually open up the possibility that there is an end to suffering. And it can be done through your efforts. So take those on as provisional friends. and see where they lead you. And right now they lead you to the breath. So stay right here, have a good sense of how the breath feels like as it comes in, how it feels as it goes out, and what you can do to make it more comfortable. And take that as a good friend, too. It'll help you stay in the present moment, where you can see things more clearly and it'll point you to worthwhile things.